all right guys welcome back nature jab in the studio here now we're gonna start off the video listen mark 4.5 gonna be a very powerful machine we're estimating between 10 and 12 magnetrons now you know how we work around here in my shop every magnetron is equivalent of one microwave that we got to take apart we got to get out the magnetrons the transformers and capacitors so right now it's just a little time lapse of about a week's worth of microwaves i've been collecting from the scrap yard from facebook marketplace for a very good discount let me tell you guys why we do this okay when microwaves are thrown away let's say you have your microwave oven at home and it goes out it's almost never never ever ever the magnetron transformer or capacitor that go out. Usually it's some type of other wiring circuitry thing, maybe even the control panel, but the main essential components that make the microwaves happen almost never go out. So if I were to go in and buy, buy a magnetron or a transformer off of Amazon or eBay, it run me almost a hundred dollars a piece. And I need all three of them. And the, the capacitors are about 15, but still I can buy a microwave for $15 on Facebook marketplace and get all three of the parts that I need. So that's what I do. That's the hustle. And uh, right now, I, I believe we're sitting about seven or eight. So we only need four more microwaves now to get enough. Now, I like to have a surplus because things get destroyed, things break. So I always like to have extra spares sitting around. So I probably will end up collecting a total of 16 to 20 microwaves. So that way we can always have the extra parts sitting around for us. But yeah, as you see, it's possible with every single microwave. Unscrew, screw. You just go ahead and uh, take all those out. We actually have it on my YouTube channel on this. It's in my uh, Sys Tutorials playlist. Finally starting to slow down. It's almost completely out. Look at it. Oh, we might catch it on film. Going out. Great news. We have done it. We have got all the propane out of this tank. This thing is completely, uh, well, not complete. There's probably still some vapors, but in terms of pressurized propane, she's all empty. No. Thing. Used to be able to hear it sloshing around, but no more. We good. So, if you guys saw how I built Mark IV, you know what we do next. The next steps are well, I'm not gonna take this valve off, and I'll tell you why. This propane tank is so rusty and so old, taking this valve off will be an absolute pain. And guess what? We're cutting off this top bit anyway. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole. Psh, Drill a bigger hole, psh, pour water in, psh, pour the water out, psh, and then just cut, cut where we want. And we're going to take this tank, and for this tank, we will have to take this valve off because I'm going to be utilizing this same hole for, just like we did here, look, the shaft. But I probably might make the hole bigger because... I think we're gonna need a one inch diameter shaft. I'm just saying, because this is gonna be a, some heavy blades for this one here. Well, this one is actually literally vacuumed out. So this one literally cannot explode in any way if I cut into it right away. So we're gonna save this side, but we're cutting off the bottom side. So what I'm doing here is we've done this before on my past machine. Once we empty out all the pressurized propane, we drill a hole into the propane tank. Now at this point, there's just minor vapors in the propane tank, so there won't be any type of pressure explosions or any issues like that. So we drill that hole and we have to expand it big enough to where we can put water in the propane tank. So what we do is right now, there would not be an explosion risk, even if we cut into it the way it is, but it would catch on fire with the residual propane vapors, but water will dissolve those residual propane vapors all over the walls and such on the machine. So we do that and now let's get to cutting. Because you guys remember when I built Mark IV uh, last year, you know, we did make Mark III out of the 55-gallon drum, but it wasn't long. It was, you know, it was wide and big. 
It had a big mouth. Big enough not for me to put my balls in it, but this is on a whole different level. Like, look at that. It literally makes Mark Floyd look like a baby. That's crazy. But, you know, that's what we said we needed, because we needed to be continuous. And the only way to do that is for us to have it so long that we could put the plastic in on this end, the blades take it all the way down, and by the time it reaches the other end, it's completely carbon, mate. Absolutely crazy. You would have thought it was Drake. That's how big this is. So guys, we have an absolute bloody ton of welding to do. I sped this up for your convenience, but listen, if you were there on the live streams, we live stream me building this and constructing it live every day on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. If you were there, you know that this has been a few hours of welding and this is just for this one seam between these two initial tanks and of course we have manway and other things to weld as well so it's a lot of welding like in fact i would say more than two hours i would say all together all of the welds probably were around three to four hours if you include you know the breaks in between to let the metal cool down because that's the thing too when you're welding this much this hot you gotta let the tanks breathe a little bit in between to limit the amount of damage you're doing to the the uh, crystalline structure of the metals from the heating and cooling cycles for one and also to prevent warping we don't want these tanks to warp so a lot of welding to do All right, guys, so what we did was we did a root pass and we did five welds over that. So six welds total, and why did we do that? To make sure that it is absolutely hermetically sealed. Now, I looked at all of my welds on a visual perspective. I had no porosity, no issues. They all tied in well, but nonetheless, it's very important to make sure of that. All right, so we need to get some sheet metal to make the auger blades for Mark 4.5. I got some a few connections that are gonna allow me to get some sheet metal for a good price. We're gonna load it up in the van, oh, the good old van here. Let's go ahead and get the sheet metal. Here we have the sheet metal. There's about six pieces of 48 by 48. This is obviously been handled. We're gonna make the wave guides out of this. So don't count that. So it's actually about five pieces of 48 by 48. And you can see the thickness there. We're gonna two ply them up because if the blades are made of too thin of metal, what's gonna happen is they're gonna end up stretching and warping over time because of the heat. In fact, we might triple ply them up. We'll see. We'll, just, we'll see, it depends. But I calculated Mark IV has about eight blades. And you see, Mark IV is about the size of one of these tanks. There's two, that's 16. But I actually wanted to speak on that. I was really giving this some thought. You know what the whole goal of this machine is. We need it continuous. I think it's too short. Actually, I don't think it's too short. The machine is too short. It's not many rotations of the blade between the beginning and the end unfortunate but that's the truth we're gonna need another tank because i don't want to have to artificially slow or put my hands on any mechanism of the machine to make sure 
that it's not gonna put plastic that hasn't been completely carbonized at the end. I wanna have the blades always rotating at a very slow RPM at all times, right? I don't wanna have to make them go reverse, just a very slow RPM forward at all times. And we can keep that, that same speed as we load plastic in. And then by the time the plastic reaches the end, no matter how much we put it in the beginning, it is guaranteed to be completely carbonized. And we'll need a longer chamber for that. I just know it. I can just see it. This is not long enough. So we're going to get another propane tank empty this time. So I don't have to do all that mess of flaring it. Because, you know, the empty ones are probably only about $100 or $80 more than getting it used. So get another one. Weld it on the end. You know what we do after that? Weld the man way on. And then, yes... I mean, Mark IV is going to be an absolute dwarf compared to this thing because this is legit about to be like, you know, we were this is about six foot now. It's about to be. What is that? At almost nine foot. So, yeah.